This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where business owners, yes, they share their wisdom. It's short and to the point because we respect people's time and because we know, and you know, transforming possibility happens fast and it leads to real lasting results. So let's get to it. Question number one. Ryan, in a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Brad. I'm, I'm Brian Clayton. I'm CEO, co-founder of a company called GreenPal. So in one sentence, GreenPal is the Uber for lawn mowing. You need to get your grass cut. You just download the app. Somebody come out and mow your yard the next day. Love it. So simple, really succinct. So the Uber for lawn mowing. Love that. Crystal <laughs> clear, man. I can't wait to dive in a little bit. Uh, yeah, it, it, the, 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 the human brain is wired to avoid complexity. So I try to try to communicate our value proposition as simple as we can. Brian, you're speaking my language. Complexity <laughs> is the enemy. Simple is brilliant. I love it. We're, <laughs> we're, we're speaking the same talk. Question number two, Brian, what's the best thing about being in business? Oh, the best thing about being in business is something that causes you to level up, causes me to learn things I never would have learned, to do things I never would have done, to read books I never would have been interested to read. So, uh, you know, 20 years of business, I, I've, I've constantly like checked in every five, 10 years and I'm a different person. I'm always having to reinvent myself and the business and the marketplace extracts that out of me. Love that because this is not your first rodeo. This is not your first business, is it? That's right. Yeah. Actually, before Green Pal, I had a lawn mowing business. I started cutting grass in high school and college and over a 15 year period of time, built that to one of the largest landscaping companies in the state of Tennessee where I live, got it over 10 million in revenue, over 150 employees, and, and then I sold it. So uh, after I sold that business, I retired and then I just decided, hey, I want to get back in the game. And I recruited two co-founders and started working on Green Pal. Love that. I love that story. And I love hearing that. Thanks for sharing that for, for all the listeners and people watching as well. Question number three, we hear from other, this is a fun one. We hear from other business owners again, so much business, because it's true, that the chaos sometimes causes overwhelm. What are your thoughts on that, Brian, if you would? Yeah, you know, uh, I think that's the that's a good problem to have when you have so much business uh, that that you you can't keep up with all of it. And because uh, I've had the other problem where you can't get the phone to ring. I went through the 2008 financial crisis, and and it was like somebody took a water faucet and just turned it off. There was no nobody wanting to do business with anybody. So I think that's a good problem to have, and just constantly reframing and and understanding like, okay, this is great that I, I have these challenges to deal with in terms of growing my business and keeping up with demand, and uh, and also. It, it can be the thing to help you put in the systems to get to from seven figures to eight figures or six figures to seven figures. So, so uh, look at, look at that, that overwhelming feeling as an opportunity It's happened, not happening to you, it's happening for you. And this is the, this is the moment where you got to start building those systems to deal with it. Love it. So true. It all comes down to the systems. <laughs> as you know, that's great. Thank you. Especially having, having built a company to 10 million, you know, it really is all about the systems in between those levels, isn't it? That's exactly right. That's what gets you uh, past seven figures to eight figures. 100%. Question number four, what other successful business owners like yourself, of course, Brian, should be on the Unlimited Wisdom Podcast? Ooh, uh, there's a guy by the name of Noah Kagan that, that I follow on YouTube and Instagram. Great guy. Uh, he uh, was employee number 20 at Facebook and uh, pissed off Mark Zuckerberg and got fired. And, and, he, and he basically lost the, uh, the effect of about 100 or $200 million in stock options. And he rebuilt himself. And he started a business called AppSumo. So you should reach out to him. Great guy. Love it. I love it. I know who he is. When you're telling the story, I'm like, wait, that sounds similar. But, you know, I love it. That is one heck of a story, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And I love that. He just never gave up and now he's doing really well. Love it. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing it, Brian. Let's get to some wisdom. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. What piece of wisdom, Brian, would you share with other business owners coming from your experience? Ooh, uh, what do I, what do I single out? Um, make it ridiculously simple for people to speak with you as the business owner, reduce all friction for, for uh, customers to speak with you and give you feedback because it's that feedback is kind of like your in-house R and D. It's the thing that guides you in terms of what you need to be working on, where your business kind of stinks and what you need to fix. And a lot of business owners, you know, myself, I've been guilty of this. will will put up barriers between them and their, their customers because they just, they don't want to hear it and the feedback hurts. Well, make it simple, make it really easy for them to reach you, 
by, by phone, email, or in-app chat, whatever. Uh, because over a long period of time, that, that feedback is what enables you to build something, uh, a business that people want to continue to use. So let's dive in there a little bit, Brian. This is great. This is a great point. Remove the resistance between you and your customer is what I heard, or you and your client, right? So what are some, you, I mean, you're not, you've been around the block a few times, right? So what are some of the, some of the, the ideas or suggestions that you might offer to remove some of that resistance? What, what's coming to mind, I'll share freely with you, Brian. It's like, you don't want to keep a close sign on your door when you're actually open, right? That's the image that I, that I came to me. But what, what, what comes to mind for you and what are some of the actual action steps that you might recommend someone just starting out? Yeah, yeah. So if you don't do this, there's a gap that develops between you and your customer, uh, between company logic and customer logic. And so uh, you want to close that gap. And the way you do that is just through constant communication, whether it be by phone, email, or text. For me, some things that have worked, you know, I'm, we have a digital product. We have a mobile app that connects buyers and sellers, but we have a little piece of chat uh, software embedded in, in every screen. And so anybody that's using our products can talk to us at seven days a week, uh, 24 hours a day. And I myself, you know, I have a team of about 24 people that work in this business, but I still do at least an hour a day of in-app customer support. That way I'm never like too far away from customer logic. I always understand what's frustrating them and what they wish the app would do and, and things that we need to work on and things that we need to improve. So it's kind of like free R and D and, you know, at a more practical level, if you're not building a, a digital product, you know, I've, I've seen business owners not want to give their personal cell phone out and uh, give like an office number out. And like, that's just silly to me. Like, you know, this is a business is a full contact sport. It's six, seven days a week. You need to make it dead simple for people to reach you as the proprietor. And, and, and if not, you know, there's going to be that gap that develops between you and your customer, and you're not going to really innately understand what it is they want or, or, or what it is that uh, you need to be doing to make them happier so they stick around. I love it. I, lo I love your description. Very, very uh, tactical. Absolutely love what you shared. The other piece of what you said was about feedback of what I heard. And so like feedback is a real gift, isn't it? And so what would you, is there some suggestions or some ideas if someone's like, you know what, I'm listening to this, that Brian guy, he's really smart and that's some great nuggets he's dropping. I see he knows his stuff. And I, I think I need to get more feedback from my clients and my customers. Any suggestions that you might offer there to, to actually open up the door to get real, real candid feedback from people? Yeah. Uh, you know, let's say you are a yoga instructor and you've got 12 customers. You can just put on your Google calendar every week to text them and say, Hey, uh, just, just let me know how are things are going with, with, with our classes. You know, what do you wish we would do that we don't, uh, what, uh, what, what, what are we doing that, 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 uh, that you like that you don't like. And just something as simple and basic as that. I know that sounds silly and like trite, but most, 90% of business owners don't do it. Uh, and, then, and then as your business grows, let's say you have a, you, you've you got a restaurant that, that you've got an email list of a thousand people uh, that you collected from using your Wi-Fi or whatever, you know, running a simple survey monkey, you know, once a month, ask your customers how you're doing, you know, ask them uh, what it is that, that you know, open any questions. What do you wish we would do that we're not currently doing? And don't uh, be resistant to, to what you hear back. You know, look at the feedback as it's happening to you and not uh, it's happening for you and not to you. And use that as like an opportunity to, to make your business better and, and to kick your comp your competitors butts, because that that feedback is 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 how you can understand where you need to be going. You'll never be at a loss for, okay, these, these are the things we need to be improving about our business. And this stuff sounds simple, but the reality is nine out of 10 business owners don't do it. So true. I love that you're sharing it. The fortune is in the follow-up, as it said. And real candid feedback is just, it's, it gets you out of the comfort zone and gets you into the growth zone. So really simple, but tactical and fruitful information, Brian. I really, I really appreciate you sharing that. Let's switch gears. I know you and I have a lot to talk about. We can talk for hours. Let's switch gears. We live, uh, we work to live, not live to work. See, I almost got it wrong there. I must be working too much. <laughs> but, you know, we do. We work to live. So I'm dying to know what's the most fun vacation you've ever had? 
I love the travel. It's a passion of mine. You know, I, I actually had never been out of the country. I'm 40 years old. I'd never been out of the country up until uh, uh, age 38. And because I had been working on my businesses for, for 20 years. Um, when I finally got my second company, Green Pal, to a point of profitability and, and a good team around me, I decided, I decided to start traveling more. And for me, uh, a good vacation is is not one sitting on the beach. It's, it's one uh, laying out some sort of challenge to go conquer. And so whether it be like uh, going scuba diving or, or hiking some hard hike, I actually uh, messed up in, in, in Mexico. I, I signed up for a, what I thought was a hike, but it was really climbing the tallest mountain in Mexico. And uh, that was that was an experience. I, I felt like I was going to die. But uh, but that, you know, that was probably one of my funnest vacations. You know, at the time I was like, why did I sign up to do this? I'm freezing cold. I can't breathe. Everything hurts. I've been on this. I've been on this climb for two days. But looking back, you know, that was one of the moments that really stands out in terms of traveling for me. So trying to challenge yourself and, and, and get the body moving to experience things, experience nature to me is what, what a good adventure and a good vacation looks like. I love it. I, I too love the adventures. I <laughs> love your, love your story, man. That's great. Those are the ones we remember when we get right. a little bit of growth in there, right? Something challenging, right? That's so right. <laughs> Brian, thanks so much. I appreciate you being on. I know how busy you are. I get it. I appreciate the investment of your time and just being here. So thank you very much. When when somebody listens to this and watches this and says, like I said earlier, like, hey, I have to reach out to Brian. I'm really interested. I'm intrigued. I'm fascinated by what he's doing. I'd like to know more. What is the website or social media? What's the best way for them to reach out to you? Yeah, anybody listening to this doesn't want to waste time mowing their own yard. They can just download Green Pal in the App Store or Play Store. But anybody who wants to reach me personally, uh, I've been hanging out on LinkedIn a lot lately. So you can connect with me there and shoot me a message on LinkedIn. Great. I love it. That's right. Don't cut your own grass. Work smart, not hard, right? That's right. Time is <laughs> time is better spent working on your business. Let somebody else mow the yard. 100%. Thanks again. Thanks so much for being on, Brian. This is Brad A. Milford with the Unlimited Business Wisdom Podcast, where business owners, are you ready? Yeah, they're making five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 figures. But it's not all about the money. For us entrepreneurs, it's also about sharing their wisdom and creating impact globally. Thanks for joining us.